right, in the last section here of the respiratory system, we actually need to take a look at um, an organ that is neither truly a respiratory organ, nor is it a conducting organ within the respiratory system. It does not have air actually pass through it, but it's also not a true accessory structure, and that is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is what actually controls our ability to inhale and exhale. But if you look at the, the structure itself, it's technically not part of the respiratory system because it's a muscle. Um, so it actually belongs as part of the muscular system. Now, how does the diaphragm control inhalation and exhalation? Well, let's actually take a look first here at exhalation. When we exhale, the diaphragm actually relaxes. Um, and this is actually counterintuitive a little bit simply because when we think of exhaling, we know that we can actually forcefully exhale. So we tend to think of this as being a contraction. But what's actually happening is you're contracting your abdominal wall muscles and not the actual diaphragm itself to, to push the air out. So the diaphragm, when it relaxes, it actually moves upward in the thoracic cavity and decreases the volume that is available in the thoracic cavity. This creates a positive pressure, which is basically a pushing force on the air and on the lungs. So it actually is pushing upward as it relaxes. And what this does is it pushes the air out of the lungs. Now, if we look at the process of inhalation, the, the idea is that, it's, that it basically is reversed. When we inhale, the diaphragm contracts and it moves downward in the thoracic cavity. So it actually increases the amount of volume within the thoracic cavity. That generates a negative pressure, which is essentially a vacuum. And the way air pressure works is air is going to flow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. Well, a vacuum is essentially the lowest pressure you can get. So the air is going to go from the high pressure outside of the body to the low pressure on the inside of the body. And that negative pressure actually pulls the air down in to the lungs. Okay, so that's how inhalation and exhalation work. And you actually have a little summary um, diagram worksheet that will help you with that, um, just to kind of help, help summarize that. Because you do need to know the difference and the steps um, that's going on with inhalation and exhalation. The last part that happens is gas exchange. Um, and obviously this is the main function, and when we think of the respiratory system, this is what we think is happening. At the alveoli, we get this exchange of oxygen coming into the blood, okay, and carbon dioxide out of the blood, and, and or of the body. So we bring oxygen into the body, into the blood, carbon dioxide out of the body from the blood at the alveoli, and that is referred to as external respiration. So this is what's happening actually at the lungs. Um, this is called external respiration because uh, basically what we're doing is we're interacting with stuff that came from the outside of the body. What happens at this point is the oxygen actually binds to hemoglobin on our red blood cells and then it travels to the tissue areas where the oxygen level is low and the oxygen then gets released. Then because we've released that oxygen, carbon dioxide is picked up in the bloodstream and it is transported in three different ways. The first way is actually dissolved in the plasma, which is about 7%. Um, this would actually create little bubbles if we had a higher concentration, but that's essentially what it is, is dissolved in, kind of like uh, carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in soda. It can also bind to the hemoglobin on the red blood cells, very similarly to the way oxygen binds with hemoglobin on the red blood cells. Now those two methods account for about 30% of the carbon dioxide carrying capacity. So the remainder is changed into carbonic acid and that's the majority of the uh, carbon dioxide gets changed into that carbonic acid to travel into uh, travel back to the lungs to get released by the body. Okay, so we can look at this little um, video clip here.
In addition to consuming oxygen, active muscles also produce large amounts of carbon dioxide. That is not the right video. This carbon dioxide mm -hmm. diffuses into the bloodstream. The concentration gradients of carbon dioxide are reversed compared to those of oxygen. So carbon All right, well, we'll try that again. Dioxide and oxygen diffuse all right, that's not the right video clip. I will actually post that as a separate clip up on YouTube. All right, so um, at the capillary level, what we get is the carbon dioxide coming into the blood and the oxygen level going, or the oxygen amounts going out of the blood in the tissues is referred to as internal respiration. So we have external respiration taking place at the lungs, internal respiration taking place at the body tissues and then don't forget you learn in biology we also have cellular respiration which is the exchange of gas between the mitochondria in the cells and the cytosol or cytoplasm that surrounds it